Jeremiah 29 verse 7 it tells us that the prosperity of our nation will definitely influence our own personal prosperity. So we can't actually prosper the way we ought to prosper if our nation is not prospering. So there is a need for us to look at ways for us to do our bit in advancing the prosperity of our nation so that we can come to the fullness of the wealth and riches that God has in store for us. So the Bible tells us that we should pray. Of course, the Bible tells us that we should have faith but then it says, faith without works <clears throat> is dead. So we've seen a lot of prayer. We've seen a lot of confession spoken over our nation. And for majority of people here, knowing that we are of the younger generation, Majority of people have never seen Nigeria in abundance. Some have never seen a number of things work at all in Nigeria. There used to be a time when civil service worked in Nigeria. Not too far ago, there, is, there used to be a time when universities worked in Nigeria. Um, but unfortunately, there is a generation who hasn't experienced that and all that they've been doing for Nigeria is praying and hoping, praying and hoping, praying and hoping. But it is my prayer that that generation will see the glory of this country because the Lord will restore the glory. So we now know that we have to do much more than prayer for us to be able to experience a glorious nation. We have to do much more than prayer praying. I think we cannot begin to solve a problem unless we know what the problem is. I'd like to yet again in this service quote Ben Carlson, um, a former minister of health in the United States of America. He was a presidential candidate for one of the parties. I think probably the Republican and one of the people that stepped down for Donald Trump at that time, and then he took a position in his cabinet. But there was something he said, and um, which I think is applicable to our nation, Nigeria, here. He says that we should not deceive ourselves that politicians are going to come to solve the problem of the nation. That we should be reminded that even these problems were actually created by politicians. So as we gaze and look at 2023, just like we did some seven years ago, we were expecting that the Messiah will come in a president and the lot of this country will change. I remember preaching a message and teaching in the faith clinic at that time, the catalyst of a change. The master of the party that came in to become the ruling party was changed. And by the leading of the Holy Spirit, I made it clear that change was not going to come because somebody promised change. Change will have to involve everyone. We have to participate for change to occur. Obviously, we haven't seen more changes um, since um, they came into power. So this alarm is sounding yet again so that you will hear, have ears will hear and it is my prayer that we will not be hearers of the word alone, that we will be doers of same. So if we step into Ezekiel 37, if we step into Ezekiel 37, we see something that is like a look-alike of our nation in the state that it is currently. Ezekiel 37 from verse 1, please. Ezekiel 37 from verse 1. 
the hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley and it was full of bones. Before God can begin to change a thing or the power of God can change a thing, you have to understand the current situation of the thing. You have to know what the problem is. So Ezekiel was not going to be far away from the problem if he was going to be part of the solution. In fact, some of us, you're wondering why are you going through what you're going through despite the sacrifices that you have made personally and despite the uprightness of your life and the righteousness that you have lived your life with. And you are wondering, how come I am in this kind of a mess? You are in this kind of a mess because you are a solution center. You are in that mess because God will want you to have a first-hand taste of the problem so that you will be able to be stirred up in your spirit and you'll be able to bring a solution. So the king looked at Nehemiah and said, Nehemiah, this is not your usual countenance. You are troubled. He was troubled because God had allowed a particular news to come to him that would trouble his heart. And that was what stirred up his spirit that made him to do something about building the wall of Jerusalem. So the reason why some of us are going through what we are going through is not because we are the problem, but because God wants us to know what the problem is so that we can be effective in our roles as solution center. So here was a valley of dry bones presented to Ezekiel. And God asked him a question. And God said to him, Ezekiel, can, can you go to verse 2 for me please? So then he caused me to pass by them all around and behold there were very many in the open valley and indeed they were very dry. So God made him to actually see what he was dealing with. It's no breaking news when we say that the health facility is not working for the poor in our country. I even doubt it if he's working for the rich because if he's working for the rich they will not be flying abroad for treatment. It's no news that education is not working for Nigerians. It's no breaking news that governance is not working for the majority of our citizens. So we are in a situation where the bones are not only dry, but there are very many. Whichever way you turn to, there is bound to be a problem. Now people are even scared of going from one place to another because of insecurity. Now, to crown it all up, there is this economical crisis that is challenging the whole world and except we reverse that famine, it may also affect our nation. So God made Ezekiel to be aware of these problems. And then in verse 3, verse 3, and he said to me, son of man, can this bone leave? What a question. After you have shown what ought to be working that is not working. What ought to be that is not there. What ought to be a blessing that is not a blessing. Then God asked him, despite what you have seen, Ezekiel, can these bones leave? And Ezekiel said, I'm not going to be ahead of you, Lord. Because you are the one who opens and no, one, no man can shut. You are the one who shut, no man can open. Uh, who am I to lose hope? Or who am I to give credit of hope 
without hearing what said the Lord. So Ezekiel was saying, Lord, I need a vision from you. I need a dream from you. I need an inspiration from you. Tell me what is possible. If any man or any woman is going to turn the lot of Nigeria around, that person must be able to hear God. That person must be able to hear God. That person must be able to hear God. Because there will be things that seem simple, but may be difficult because we haven't heard God. There may be things that seem difficult, but will be simple because we have heard God. So Ezekiel says, Lord, as for the hope of this thing, I have to rest my hope on something. I have to rest my hope on a solid rock. There has to be a word upon which I will hang my hope of healing. There has to be a word from God upon which I will hang my hope for progress on this job. There has to be a word from God upon which I will hang my hope of prosperity in this season. Lord, I need to hear you before I can have an opinion. Next verse. And again, he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. And that went on and on and God told him what to do. So eventually, Bible says that there was a noise. After he did what God told him to do, Bible says there was a noise. Then there was a rattling. There was a noise. There was a rattling. But in the end, the bone came to bone. The bone came to bone. So in other words, if you are going to be part of this change that is going to bring prosperity back into our land, you must be somebody who will know a voice from a noise. You yield to a voice. You ignore noises. You yield to a voice and you ignore noises. Number two, when you are on the right path, doing the right thing, expects rattling. Expect rattling. Rattling basically means, or rather is a confirmation that there is a shift. That which has settled has now become unsettled. The foundation that was laid, that was bringing pain and sorrow to citizens, before we can begin to enjoy gladness and prosperity in the land, there will be a need for a shift. And when that shift is taking place, there will be noise and rattling. There will be noise and rattling. But because the vision you are running with is of God, then you must believe and be courageous and be brave. That he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. So in the end, those bones, in verse 10, in the end, those bones, Bible says, it became a strong army. It became a strong army. In other words, the question God asked him, can these bones leave? Because he was able to follow certain steps he was able to follow certain steps he was able to do as he was commanded line upon line precept upon precept the bones coming together the flesh coming onto it the ligament coming onto it the skin coming onto it and the spirit of God coming onto it Precept upon precept, line upon line, in the end, there was a restoration. So we stand here this morning, 
and we speak over Nigeria that in the name of Jesus, the glory of this nation will yet again be restored. But we have to do what we've got to do. Genesis 41 also informs us about how a nation that did not have covenant with God reversed famine and a nation that had covenant with God, Canaan land, suffered in famine. We don't need to wonder why some people will be in the church and they will be poor and some people are outside of the church and they will be rich if we understand Genesis chapter 41. Because Egypt survived. He had no covenant with God. He survived the famine. He became richer in famine. But Canaan land, the sons of Israel, they had to travel to Egypt to be helped by Egypt. I pray for you that the, your help will not be in the hand of the wicked. Oh, I have to pray that prayer for you. I pray for you that God will not put your help in the hand of the wicked. Maybe I need to pray that prayer one more time. I pray for someone under the sound of my voice that when God is choosing your destiny helper, may he not put your help in the hand of a wicked person. Yeah.